Hello everyone, welcome back to Major Minor. This is Cross. <clears throat> I just want to say, there's no particular reason why I didn't get this one out. I was just being a really big lazy cunt. And every time I thought about making another episode, I was all like, I could do another one right now, but I don't want to. And then as soon as I knew it, three weeks passed by, so I'm not going to put this off any longer. Um, let's get this going. <clears throat> it looks like I might be getting closer to the surface. The air's less stuffy, and I feel a slight breeze. It's nice to feel the outside air once more. I turn a corner and notice a new me standing there. Oh joy, him. He's writing on the green wall with some chalk. I look closer. He's doing math. The same equation that saved our lives. <laughs> okay. The stupid fucking, like, what is, like, the birth? <laughs> is he trying to figure out how to solve the problem? He did, though. I don't... After all, Artron gave him the answer earlier. Maybe he wanted to learn it on his own. I mean, it, when he, when you, like, solved the bomb, he was the one that gave the answer, right? Unless he just, like, remembered the number and not, like, the problem. But, whatever. <laughs> fucking a new me. Ugh. Hi. I don't remember what voice I gave him. I think I gave him, like, a very stereotypical Patrick-sounding voice, but I don't think I want to do that. Um, I greet him back with a small wave. I ask him what he's up to. Just doing some math. I have an exam coming up soon. I don't want to fail. He seems to be taking his studies seriously. I ask him if he has some time to fu I mean to chat. Yes, just to chat, not uh, fool around. After all, we might be here for a while. Yeah, so, I have some questions for you, actually. Archeron told me a story about his sister. He said that she had powers, or that he said that you treated her as well. Does that mean you and Archeron are bad people? Well, I mean, they're not bad people, but they're certainly- I laugh like a villain. <laughs> but this makes Inumi confused. I let him know that having powers doesn't make you bad. Being in a bad game makes you bad. And in this case, Archer and I weren't evil, but we're still pretty bad characters. In fact, we were dedicated to bringing Max down, one of the few decent people in this game for trying to kill us all. I let him know that she'll pay for what she did. No, we'll pay her for what she was trying to do. I wish it didn't have to be like that. You shouldn't have to make someone pay. Especially not for being bad. Especially for not doing something as good as she. The girl should be something different. Like not having bad people at all. Everyone will still be alive in that case. I don't know, would they? <laughs> I think one of you would have killed one another in like somewhere form. That's true, but it's not so simple. In fact, I know that's not what he really wants. <laughs> he just wants his brother to be alive again. You can never rid the world of bad intentions. Yeah, so you're right. We always had so much fun together, but now I get sent to another home. I really wish I could stay with the tour. It was probably starting to feel like home. I mean, the real one with the real family. I can't. I thought it doesn't hurt doing that voice, but it does. Like it feels odd. I don't like it. <laughs> I mean, the real one with the real family. If only Bernard was given the same powers, he's all about saving people, you know. Just like you saved me a few years ago. Oh dear. What did he mean by get sent to another home? And for that matter, how could they save him? What was he, like a prostitute on the streets with that outfit? I could believe that. I asked him what he meant by that out of curiosity. Ugh, your bond with a new me was strong enough. <laughs> He puts the piece of chalk in his pocket. Oh boy, I'm gonna have to do like an entire fucking monologue in that voice. I, I'm not very smart. I do not plan ahead. Um, <clears throat> he looks a little nervous or hesitant. <clears throat> Dear God, I'm like, oh, are you fucking joking? I promise I'd never tell anybody this. Even since I never could. But I think you're so special and unique, Minato. You're the main character, so I will tell you. We've been through a lot, haven't we? 
even though we just blew up like a bomb or some shit. Or we just haven't even known each other for that long. You, you've known each other for like at most like three hours. I don't know why you're like talking to him in such a way. <clears throat> I really wish you could have bro. Be a case of Latin Kingdom. Maybe that's why we can't be on so well. We both lost our parents when we were young. But he had an important life ahead of him. We are gonna be payment exam. I'm just gonna do that voice instead. It's like really hard trying to do the other one. So he didn't have the trouble that I did. When my parents died, I was put in a home. I didn't really have any other family. But I think they rushed to put me there. It was like they wanted to get rid of me. I mean, with your fur design, I couldn't fucking blame them. They didn't care who looked after me. My foster parents were really rude to me. There must have been a lot of kids like me. It's like they had to move fast. The government doesn't care about quality. No, damn. My foster parents ended up getting divorced. I don't think my foster father was happy. He started to take his anger out on me. Sexually. <laughs> I had a bunch of old pictures I loved. Pictures of me and my real parents. I even had letters from them too. I didn't develop as fast as I should have. So we practiced writing a lot. I had to learn how to do in the letters. Oh dear. Develop, like what, is he special? Like is he like canonically special? Holy shit. He came up in my walk one night. I saw my foster father tearing them apart. Jesus Christ. You have to move on, he said to me. But I think he was talking to himself. He must have missed my foster mom. That's the night he got really angry. He started to hit me a lot. He kept telling me it was my fault. I got between him and his wife. But I knew that it wasn't true. They signed up for this program. They knew what they were getting into. Fucking idiots, that's extreme. I'm sorry I had to go through that. Some people just aren't fit to be parents. I side with him, telling him he did nothing wrong. Except exist. They ran for me and I hid inside a closet. I took his phone and I called the police. They came and helped me immediately. They said they'd find me another home. But I was really scared, so I ran away. Like a little bitch. I didn't want more parents like that. I wanted my real parents back. I took a photo with me when I ran. It was ripped in half, but still fixable. I remember finding myself in a back alley in the ghetto. It was, I was hugging the photo and crying. I cried so much I could barely see. Eventually, someone found me. They asked if I was okay. I said I was, but I was lying. That's the first time I met bro. He asked me what was wrong. He thought that maybe I was lost. He said that he was an empath and I believed him. I guess I was to be honest, but that's not why I was crying. I told him everything that happened. And he said that he's a total empath and that he sympathized with me. But it seemed like he was shocked. He told me he knew what I went through as an empath. He lost his parents at a young age too. And he'd be moving around the world. He didn't have a real home either. They showed him the picture of my parents. He took one half and just stared at it like a fucking creep. Before I knew it, he was crying too. We cried in that alley for a long time and then sucked each other off for two hours. I started to hear booing from somewhere. That's when he told me he was a singer. He missed the show just to talk with me. You know, like a fucking idiot. He, they were booing because he wasn't there. So he cancelled an entire concert just to help a new me? What a faggot. I don't know if that's noble or irresponsible. Either way, leaving a new me moan would have been bad. It seems like they bonded over childhood tragedies. I heard his music before in the radio, but I didn't know what he looked like. I was surprised when he told me who he was. He looked like such a fucking Harley, you know? Da -da 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 -da. Well, I never really saw him cry since then anyway, so it must have been a really rare thing to see that. He promised me things would be okay. He said I'd find a family again. Sometimes you just have to wait. He told me all about his new family. You know, the one with the naked dragon that only wears a lab coat and shit. He toured the world with awesome people. They all looked out for one another. That was exactly what I wanted in my life. 
I deserve better than what I had because I'm a selfish little prick or something. It wasn't my fault that my parents died, except it was. You wrote their names in the death note, you old piece of shit. Why should I have to suffer for it? I was stupid, and I asked him to bring me. I wanted to have a family, just like him. He laughed and said he couldn't do that. But for some reason, I didn't believe him, because I'm a little brat. When he left the alley, I followed him, you know, like a stalker. It was dark, and I didn't want to be alone. He said he'd watch me until morning, but then he'd have to bring me somewhere. He was on a tour, and he had to get going. That's the night I met Singe. He was so mad at Clays. He ditched his entire audience. Singe said Clays was just starting out. He couldn't afford publicity like this. He need a really good excuse. So Clays told him everything. How we met in the alley. How I needed help. How we sucked each other off for five bucks each. Even how we ended up crying together. The excuse was enough for Singe. But the audience needed a reason. They deserved to know what happened. I mean, they paid to see Clays after all. I'd be bad too if I wasted my money. Especially if I had no idea why. This is so fucking boring. Oh my god. I did not miss playing this game. Clay said he'd be open. He'd tell them exactly what happened. Plus, it would come off as good PR, you know, helping an orphan or some shit. Stopping to help an orphan boy. It doesn't get any nicer than that. I remember them getting into a big fight. Singe thought it wouldn't be good enough because he's a little prick. Clays would have to do something more, you know, like strip naked on stage. <clears throat> That's when he decided to take me along as a publicity stunt. It seemed really weird to me. Was I just an excuse to the audience? Yes, you were. Because just a moment ago he said no. I was both grateful and fucking confused. It couldn't be any worse than my last home. That's why I said he likes saving others. I don't know where I'd be otherwise. Maybe in another home getting hit again. I don't think he saved you just because he likes saving people. This dude is literally just Shane Dawson. I am so- I am an em I am empath. I know how you feel. Let me help you, aka let me manipulate you. Inumi is an abuse victim from Clace. That's what it seems like to me. These giving programs don't even care. You're just a number they want to lower, and Clay sees you, saw you as a prop to use as PR. Look at this orphan boy that I've saved. How can you say I'm a bad person? <laughs> They'll put you almost anywhere they can. So I guess bro adopted me, and it probably seemed weird and sudden, but you'd understand it if you were us. Yeah, you were friends with benefits, and he manipulated you very badly. What the fuck? Two victims can connect on a deeper level victim. <laughs> you knew exactly what their pain is like. I felt his and he felt mine. Oh no, not our pain, our car. But he was in a position to help, and I couldn't just turn him down. So I ended up going along. Singe made a statement to the media. He also filed all the paperwork. The audience was very understanding. Especially since they'd reschedule the show. So none of their money would go to waste. In the end, it seemed like everybody won. That's how I got involved in the tour. That was a few years ago now. Place Shock and Rocker got way more famous. Oh my god, that does make a lot of sense. Oh, it explains why Anumi thinks they're brothers. Thinks? More like he was acting. I don't know what you mean, thinks. Go fuck yourself. <clears throat> But I have to agree, it was a little odd. That's a big life change for just one night. But I can't begin to assume what they felt. Perhaps in the moment it was the right thing to do. The world is full of weird stories like that. It only mattered that everyone was happy in the end. <clears throat> it was really cool to travel the world. I could see how so many things. And I got to see how cool bro really was. The audience always cheered for him. And soon as he stepped out of the stage, I wanted to be like that one day too. I mean, you could do that if you like work in the hooker business. You'd probably make tons of money. I looked up to him. He taught me so much. He even helped me get homeschooling done. I still had to graduate like everyone else. But I had a big happy family. A big happy family that seemed to hate each other all the time, except for Jade and Rook for some reason. Just like I always wanted. Well, except for when Sitch is mad. <laughs> he laughed softly and I do as well. Oh, I didn't... Okay. Bro... <clears throat> Bro even told me how to write properly. I was finally at the level I should have been. 
So hey, sir, write letters to my parents. Letters to God, I confirm. I knew that they'd never get them. But it made me feel happy either way. Like I was actually talking to them. I mean, I guess it's a good coping mechanism. I can't, like, I can't ruin that. That'd be fucked up. I read the letters my foster dad ruined, but this time they were perfect, just like my parents would have wanted. And I taped the ripped picture together. I keep it framed by my bed all the time. I say goodnight to them. In hell. I mean heaven. Please tell my son I'd see them again, but I can look forward to seeing him too. Who says that he's in heaven? <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's a big assumption there, Anumi, because he used you, he abused you, he used you for good PR. I don't think people like that would make it to heaven, but whatever, fine. <clears throat> Until then, I'll wait to him as well. He walks away, thank fucking god, and goes back to the wall. He resumes his math after pulling out the chalk. I can't even talk anymore after doing that voice for like... 10 minutes, I don't even know how long this was. So that's the story of how they all got together. And I guess how they got pulled apart. He told me he was studying, but he definitely wasn't. I saw the equation, I knew what he was doing. But I wasn't about to call him out on his bluff. Especially not after he opened up to me like that. So I wish him good luck as I start to leave. Oh my god, I'd look at the time on my phone almost midnight. The battle for the Ark would soon come to a close, and that means this game is almost fucking done. <clears throat> Knowing that, I walk back the way I came. I must have talked to everybody here by now, thank god. Archer on mentioned Daz and Syndra elsewhere. I like how Daz hasn't appeared since, like, chapter 2, I want to say. <laughs> I hope that they're okay, since times were tough. Speaking of tough times, something catches my eye. There's a chalk drawing on the wall beside me. It's a picture of Anumi and Clace holding hands and sucking card. The text underneath reads, I miss you, bro. <laughs> it's the last thing I'd see before I leave him behind. Would you like to save your game? Yes. I'm gonna kill myself. I will get another episode out soon because the sooner I get this shit done, the happier I will be. And then I will never have to do it again. So I'll see you all later. Goodbye. <laughs>